My name's Nicholas Roach and I work doing artwork under the alias of Roachy Art. Right, so before we get started on this graffiti tutorial, there's a few things that we're going to need. Now, we're obviously going to need some paper. We will need some pencils. It would help if you have a rubber as well for some of the latter stages and also sharpener just in case that pencil snaps. We would definitely need some sort of colours. Now it's up to you what colours you choose, whether it's colouring pencils, felt tips, or in my case, what I tend to use is a brand of paint called Posca's, which are pigment ink pens, which come out a little bit like paint. Any sort of colouring utensils are fine. You may even choose to use traditional paints on a brush, but in this instance, I'll suggest something that you can hold like a pencil, pen or felt. Right guys, make sure that you get your teacher to take photos of you while you're working, as this is very important criteria to ensure that you pass this art award. There's a couple of key words and phrases which you'll regularly hear from me throughout this tutorial. So get familiar with terms such as scale, proportion, composition in particular as these are all vitally important to graffiti as an art form. You may hear me talking about interlocking or overlapping as well but more will be revealed and become more apparent as the tutorial progresses. Right so you want to learn how to do graffiti. Well the first step is to look at a thing called tagging. Now tagging is something that graffiti artists tend to do and traditionally that means writing their name in a handwriting style on any wall or surface. So as well as a tag being your nickname or alias, it's actually the style of writing that you're doing. And that will be the basis for how we formulate our piece of graffiti. Now to do it, what you have to do is think of writing a word or phrase in your normal writing. But then what we're going to do is exaggerate certain parts, maybe change the angles of certain elements of the letter to make it a little bit more interesting, a little bit more quirky, a little bit more funky. And by doing that and exaggerating the letters and also trying to link them up in places as well, what we'll do is ultimately write a word that is a bit more visually stimulating than our normal writing. And the more quirky we can make it, the more eccentric we can make it, then overall, the better impact it will have, as this will be the foundations for our piece of graffiti. Right guys, when it comes to tagging, like I said, what we need to do is exaggerate our letters for normal writing. Now in this instance, I'm going to tag the word Stormzy. Now if I was going to write it normally, it might look something like that. However, if I was going to tag it and exaggerate my letters, my S for example, I might make the incline a little bit sharper and narrower, but then the bottom bit a lot wider. There is no right or wrong way to doing this, so it's about practicing until you find something that you like. So in this instance, I've added a little flick to the top and bottom. If tagging is not something that you're necessarily confident with or feel a bit uneasy with, then use the internet to gather resources as well. Now in this instance, I found a graffiti alphabet using Google Images. So if I was going to use this as the basis, then I'll copy each letter one at a time. Now at this point, I can ignore the drip marks on it. So I've got my S, my T, my O which is here. Now in this case, I will add that little line in the middle as well. I have my R and so on and so forth until you have finished. Now one thing I will stress as well is to be wary of the amount of space that you have on your paper. In this instance, I'm running out of space. So when starting my artwork, I need to make sure that I start further enough to the left in order to make sure that it all fits. Right guys, so now that we've created our tag, the next thing we're gonna do is build these up, using these, like I said, as a foundation to formulate our more solidified lettering for our piece of graffiti. Now what we're gonna do is start with our first letter. 
and then we're going to slowly draw around the perimeter of this using a pencil very lightly right guys so now that we have our tag on paper what we need to do is go around the perimeter of these to make this a more legible piece and substantial piece of actual graffiti art as opposed to just a tag so what we're going to do is start off picking a point just outside of the lines for our s and we're going to go around the outside edge or the perimeter of our letter trying to make sure that we stay the same distance going around the whole of the outside of that line now at this point it doesn't matter if we overlap or go over any lines we've already done because we can cross that bridge when it comes to outlining once you've done your first letter move on to your second letter in this case and a t again trying to make sure that the thickness of this letter is very similar to the letter that we did beforehand you will do this for each one of the letters on your piece of paper but with letters such as this o please remember to also do the inside of it as well trying to make sure again that the thickness is roughly the same for all of our letters like so Now, as we approach the end, what we want to do is make sure that the scale of our graffiti art is intact and try to make sure that the start and the end of our word is roughly the same height as this will give us a good sense of balance and make your artwork look a lot more even. So in this case, I've made sure that the bottom of my Y is roughly the same height in terms of the bottom and the top as my S. For any of the letters in the middle of our word, they're not dictated to have to be the same height as our start or end. But as long as the first and the last letter are roughly the same height, you'll get a good sense of balance for your artwork. Right, so for the next part of this lesson, what we're going to do is look at outlining our letters. Now with that, what that will do is help define and dictate what stays and what goes. We'll be looking at what parts of the letters overlap each other and how to decide which parts of the outlines are the most effective part to go over to ensure that your graffiti art looks as true to graffiti as an art form as possible. Now, when it comes to doing the outlining, what we first need to do is get ourselves a marker pen. Now, it's up to you whether you choose to use something like this, which is a permanent marker, something like what I'm using, which is a pigment ink pen, or alternatively, you can use a felt tip. It doesn't matter what pen you're using, what does matter is that it's not a pencil. Now when it comes to outlining, what we want to do is go over the lines that we've just drawn around the perimeter of our tag. And where letters overlap, we have to decide which we want on top and which we want underneath. Now in this instance, I want this part, the S, being on top of the T. So what I'll be doing is going over that part of the outline and continue my way all the way around. Now to make it more interesting, what I equally want to do 
is have this part of the T overlap the S. What this will do is help the letters to interlock with each other, which is something that a lot of graffiti artists will do with their work. Because of that, I will leave this part of the S when doing my outline and instead continue at this stage here where the T is not present. When then going over the outline for my T, I will go over the line here, but where it is underneath the S, I won't see that line and therefore I'll leave it. But I'll instead continue to go around, choosing to have it overlap this part of the O, but equally go behind that part of the O and back over the S. Now you'll continue doing this for the remainder of your letters, choosing again what you want underneath, like this part of the O, and what you want on top, like that part of the R, until all of your outlines, which were the lines that you went around the perimeter of your tag, have all been done. Now when doing your outlines, you do not necessarily have to start with your first letter and end with your last letter. Do your outlines in an order which you feel most comfortable doing. If you're using a pen like myself, which is pigment ink, then please make sure that you don't put your hand over the lines that you've just done as it may cause them to smudge. And in that instance, what it would unfortunately mean is that you'd have to start again. When doing your outline and choosing what letters and which parts of letters overlap others, there is no right or wrong. That is completely down to you as the artist. So if it is that you're choosing to do the same word as me, please do not feel that you have to have the same parts overlapping and interlocking. But that said, if your letters do overlap and interlock with each other, it means that you're doing a great job. The next stage for making our graffiti artwork is to add what's known as 3D. Now what that will do is help make your letters jump out of the page and stand out even more so. 3D is something that all graffiti artists tend to add to their artwork and is part of the authenticity of it as an art form. There's various ways to do it, so I'll discuss the different options that you have. Some are easier than others, so depending on what you're most confident doing and feel most comfortable doing, pick one that applies to you. If you can imagine each of your letters being slightly down and slightly to the right hand side of what it is that you've drawn. If I use this box as an example, then what we want to do is have our shadow or our 3D come slightly to the left and underneath. And then what we'll do is connect it. So in the same sense, we'll do that with our letters. So if I start with the S, what we want to do is come slightly to the left and slightly underneath, following the shape of the letter. Now notice where I've curved it in there, that's because if I was following the shape of the letter, it would continue on the inside, and those are parts that we would not ordinarily see. But the letter would then come back out at the bottom and round. At this top bit here, I equally need to connect it out to the top and we will continue this for each one of the letters that we've done. Now where letters are overlapping each other, again, we needn't worry about the parts inside. It's only outside to the left and underneath, which we need to draw our 3D. Now when it comes to coloring these in, which we'll get to shortly, a lot of graffiti artists will ordinarily do these in black and if you intend to do it black 
you're more than welcome to color these in at this point using your marker. However, if like me, you leave these open and white, it will give us better possibilities when adding color in the final stage of our artwork. So again, we want to make sure that anywhere to the left and underneath of a letter has the 3D, like that part there, just inside here, which will be for that part of the Y. This little bit here for the Z. There would also be little parts like that part of the M and also the inside of our letters as well. So then underneath and to the left of our letters. Just like that. Once we're happy with the placement of our 3D, don't forget to go over it with the same marker that you used for your original outline as what we want to make sure is that any outlines that we've done, whether it's for our main letters or the 3D, are the same color and thickness. Just like so. Remembering to also get any nooks and crannies that we've included. What we can also do to help make our letters stand out more is go around the outside edge with a thicker marker. Just like this. Now, if you intend on colouring in your 3D in black, I would personally avoid doing this step as it will not have the same effect. However, if like me, you intend to color in your 3D using a color that's not black, this is an awesome way of helping to make your artwork stand out even more by giving it a bold outline. And there we have it guys. Our finished outline of our chosen word in graffiti. The last and most important stage of graffiti art is adding color. What we're gonna do is look at different color theories that we can adopt to our artwork in order to make sure that everything is cohesive and looks visually pleasing to the eye. Right now for the next step, what we're gonna do is add color to our artwork. But before we do that, what we first need to do is get rid of all the pencil marks for everything that we've drawn so far. Now the benefit of using pen or markers for our outline is that we can rub straight over it without rubbing out the bits that we really need. Now when adding color to our work, it will be really good if we can use either complementary or analogous colors in our artwork. Now complementary colors are two colors that are opposite each other on the color wheel. 
whereas analogous colours and colours that are next to each other on the colour wheel. The most commonly used analogous colours in graffiti are these three, which are red, orange and yellow, kind of like a sunset. But in this case, what I'm going to do is use three shades of blue, because blue is my favourite colour. Now how we colour in the letters is completely up to us, but what I'm going to do is a simple gradient. So with that, I'm going to split my letters roughly into three parts. With my darkest bit being in the middle. Then once I've identified the area, I'm going to colour it in. Once I've done my darkest area, I'm then going to go slightly outside of that with my next shade. Both at the top and the bottom. And I'm then going to get my lighter shade after doing that bit which I've missed. And go one shade lighter. Now how you choose to colour in your letter is completely up to you. And the more creative you can get with it, the better. For example, I might then decide if using some of my paint markers. To make our letters more interesting, you can use other colours to create patterns over the top. Now if you use pens such as these Poskas, it will give us the possibility of going straight over what we've already done, creating other shapes such as hearts or maybe stars to make our letters look a little bit more interesting. Some people might choose to do shapes such as triangles or circles. It's completely up to you at this point what it is you choose to add over the top. The more creative you can make it, the better. And what you want to do is continue that with each letter that you've done. But Now, as you can probably notice, I'm coloring this in, in what isn't the necessary start to finish order. And by that, what I mean is I've not started with the S and done each letter one at a time. Now, I find that if I approach coloring in my letters in a free flowing way, then I end up becoming more creative with it. So it is up to you whether you choose to colour in each letter one at a time from start to finish or equal or alternatively like I'm doing, approach it one colour at a time, working on the different sections of our letters. Ultimately what you want to do is feel comfortable doing whatever it is you're doing colouring wise. So as long as you feel comfortable then you'll still achieve 
a really good and visually stimulating piece of artwork. One tip I would love to give you guys is to try and make sure that when you're using fell tips in particular, whether that's normal fell tips or like myself Sharpies in this case, that you colour in down in the same direction. As otherwise what may happen is you'll have brush strokes going in different directions, which can sometimes, not always, but sometimes take away from the overall feel of your artwork. In this case, what I've done is coloured in horizontally or going from left to right throughout the artwork. Once I've finished off laying out my basic colouring in, I'll continue to build up additional shapes like stars and hearts across the remainder of the artwork. which again, you can do in whichever colors you wish. Right guys, the last thing left to do is colour in the 3D, which in this case what I've chosen to do is use pinks. The reason why I've chosen pink is because I personally love the colour contrast between blues and pinks and I think they really work well together. A lot of people will traditionally go for a darker colour than what they've used for 
their lettering. But as you can see, the pink really pops and helps it to stand out that little bit more from the page. Now my best piece of advice whilst colouring in guys is to take your time. What we don't want to do is rush it because at this stage again if we end up doing something that we're not happy with it's quite a long process to rectify that. But if we can concentrate and take our time then what we'll do is ultimately produce a piece of artwork that we're really happy with. And that is how to do a piece of graffiti.